Good morning. My name is Pastor Jeremy Shines. This is I Am Loved Church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us exposit your word. We pray that you would breathe upon us, Lord. We pray you would wash us with your word. Keep our hearts and our minds fixed on you and not any other distractions or things in this world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we left off in Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. <clears throat> so I like to read the whole paragraph. So I'm going to read the whole paragraph. God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day. In the darkness, he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And there you have it. So the waters, so God made the expanse and separated the waters which were under the expanse from the waters which were above the expanse. And it was so. God called the expanse heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Amen. All right, let's pray one more time. Father, there's a word here. There's a message here. And I pray that they would hear you, not me. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Verse 1, or chapter 1, verse 5. The light represents the day. Good morning. <laughs> the light represents the day. The day represents the light. So, when God creates things, the Bible says here, he separates it. So, in other words, what he's doing is he's showing us who he is through creation. You don't actually need the Bible to know who God is. You don't actually need the Bible to know who God is. Romans says, they know that there's a God by the things that exist, by the created world around them. They are just denying there is a God. Everyone, the Bible says, even the demons believe there's a God. Even they know there's a God. Well, they're fallen angels. <laughs> even they, they know there's a God. Everyone believes in God. Everyone knows there's a God. But do they trust in him as God? And the answer is most people don't. They shut their ears. They shut their eyes. They shut their hearts to him. That's what Romans says. Okay. So when we see the light, it's interesting. I see people that enjoy the sunlight, but they deny there's a God. They go, oh man, I love the sunlight. The sunlight is so amazing. But they denied to give the glory to God for letting the light shine upon them. The day. Mornings are my favorite time of day. For many reasons. It's quiet. You got that mist coming out of the ground as Genesis, somewhere in Genesis says, says it says, God did not create man yet, so he did not send rain to water the earth uh, so man can till the ground. So therefore, a mist came out of the ground. And, and, and there's that dew, there's that morning dew of that mist that comes out of the ground. You can feel it. It feels really nice. And then you got that nice warm sun hitting you in the morning. Those are things that God created. And he's showing, he's rep, he's showing us his, his glory here because God gave us free will. He created this world knowing he would give us free will, knowing we would rebel. And so he wants to make a point here. You ever notice the freaks don't come out in the morning? Some of them do, but most of them come out at night. Freaks come out at night. That's a song, right? But it's not just a song. It's true. What happens at night is usually not good. <laughs> it's usually not good. There's a saying that goes, nothing happens Nothing good happens after 2 o'clock in the morning. A lot of bad things happen at night. Most crime is committed at nighttime. Like I said, he created this world. 
and he show, he's showing us who he is. The fingerprints of the dark versus the light, the nighttime versus the daytime. Those are his fingerprints. Those are the evidences of that he exists. And so day is a good thing. Night, not so much. The light represents the day. The day represents the light. Most of my good days are in the daytime. Towards the evening, when the, when the sun starts setting, things get a little, yeah. <laughs> the darkness represents the night, and the night represents the darkness. Like I said, God is showing us his character here. He's, he's, also, he's also showing us humanity here. Like I said, if you ever meet people in the daytime, like in the morning time, they're, they're, they're usually, well, depends on where you're at, depends on where you live, but usually those people who come out in the morning time, they're pretty, they're pretty nice people for the most part. I'm not saying all the time, but, but the people who come out at nighttime, like you, you got to notice the difference. Okay. Let me say, this is why, <laughs> this is why people who love the morning are usually nice. People who love the nighttime when they have to wake up in the morning, they're usually not nice. <laughs> Vice versa. People who love the morning time, when they stay up later, they don't like the night time. Right? It's like it's like a it's an interesting paradox here going on here. A lot of bad things happen at night. So the people who love the nighttime, they hate the morning time. The people who love the morning time, they're not really fond of the night. This too shows God's character. The Bible says this doesn't, not just creation testifies of God. But our behavior testifies that there is a God. You notice in most societies, the rule of thumb is all relatively the same. Don't cheat on uh, your spouse or right don't go sleeping around with other people's spouse that's true to most every culture most every culture it doesn't matter if they speak Zimbabwe or if they are from the Middle East or whatever that everybody knows that that's a bad thing stealing same thing right murder same thing right there are certain laws that are universal to every culture during every time of any time of history during to, during any kinds of people there are certain truths that are just universal to all sorts of people this testifies that there is a god that there there's something innate in all of us that knows what right and wrong is now we may not agree on every point but there are certain absolute truths the Bible even says, Romans says, the, Paul writes, even the wicked are sh living as if there's a God, though they deny him. <laughs> they go to work. They pay their taxes. They try, most people try not to murder one another <laughs> or steal from one another, right? And those who do steal and murder they know what they're doing is wrong. That's why they're doing it in secret. That's why they're doing it, trying to flee a circumstance or situation. We've got a lot of people right now trying to run from different states to another, trying to flee from one state to another. I've heard some states are a lot more harsher on certain crimes than others, and some are more lenient than others. <laughs> but if you talk to these people, it's the same story, different person, different circumstances have happened, but it's the same story as far as sin, as far as day and light and night. It's the same thing. This too, even the darkness testifies that there is a God. Believe it or not, folks, even sin glorifies God, but God is not of sin. Even Sin is the evidence that God exists. Even the demons, even the evil testifies and still gives glory to God. Did you know whether you obey God or whether people obey God or not? 
God gets glory? Did you know when people sin, whether they sin or don't sin, God gets glory? Literally, the Bible says, and creation around us says, whether people are doing the right thing or the wrong thing, whether they're acknowledging God or not acknowledging God, it doesn't matter. All these things testify that there's a God. Even those in hell testify that there's a God. Why? Because Revelation says there are demons and there are people in hell looking up to the heavens and blaspheming God. Think about that. So even when they deny God, <laughs> whoever they are, whether they end up in hell or heaven, whether they are here now, acknowledging this beautiful day, or living a wicked, wickedly at night, acknowledging God in their existence or not, God's still being praised. God is still getting glorified by, by their very behavior. Because the scriptures are basically like, hey, this is what human people beings are like. They're going to do this, 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 and this. And then you read it and you look at their behavior and you go, oh my gosh. They're doing exactly what the scriptures testify that they're going to do. Oh, glory to God. Whether they ever come to it and open it up and repent and try to live and obey it, they are, they are doing exactly what the scriptures declared thousands and thousands of years ago. And I don't mean just back to the days of Jesus. I mean all the way back to creation. About 10,000 years, they, they presume, is when creation actually happened, when God made it, but we don't really know. Not millions and billions of years, that's, that's of the world. <laughs> Even evolution testifies that there must be a creator. There must have been a beginning. And something, whether it was the Big Bang or not, started it or banged it. Someone, I like how one apologetic Jesus person said, apologetics person said, he said, you know, I believe there was a big bang, but I know who banged it. <laughs> and so it doesn't matter whether people ever acknowledge God's existence, whether they're in heaven or hell, God be praised. God be praised, no matter what. In other words, good things usually happen during the daytime. And bad things usually happen during the nighttime. But either way, God is praised. And so when we look at our day today, the Bible is testifying human nature. It's, it's one book to, to describe human nature will continue to go through this cycle of rebelling against God. And every time they do, <laughs> the same repetitious cycle of history will repeat itself. This book just continues to declare, if you compare history, well, this is history, to this history, to secular history, you will see the same kinds of men show up over and over and over. Many for evil, very few for good, and they will war after the same thing. They will continue to do the same thing. You, I look around and I go, oh my gosh, this has been declared the same old, same old. Wow. It's like, a, like you can read everyone's autobiography right here <laughs> and just go, yeah, there's that person. Yep. There's the Judas. Yep. There's that unbeliever. Yep. There's that Pharisee. Yep. There's that Pharaoh. Yep. There's that. Yeah. <laughs> the, the thing is, those, those people have long passed and they're dead, whether they're in heaven or hell. And there's just a new generation of those kinds of people showing up. That's it. That's all it is. What's happening in our world today isn't new. It's not. Read the Bible. You'll see it. You'll be like, oh my gosh. The dude who's in our Oval Office right now is doing the exact same thing, for example, that Pharaoh did. 
you know, Pharaoh, Moses showed up and says, you know, he speaks for God. So God is speaking through him. And he's saying, and so as Moses is saying, it's not Moses. God is speaking through Moses and saying, let my people go. And Pharaoh at this time represents Satan. <laughs> and he's speaking for Satan. And he says, who is this God? I don't know this God. He does now. And in spite of him saying that, he does know this God. He just refuses to acknowledge him as God. He just refuses. So many people are just refusing to acknowledge God as God. It's so sad. But like I said, most of the comfort that I get, just in general, it's from God's word. <laughs> when I don't know what I'm doing, when I don't know where things are going in life or what's going to happen to this country, God says, come to my word and let me show you. This is not ever going to change. My word will never change. Man or human beings or demons or whatever, they'll always try to find another way around my word, but it has been declared. That's why there's one book, man. God doesn't need a thousand million books. He sums it up in the Bible of what humanity is like. It will continue to do generation after generation over and over and over again so long as they turn their backs on the one true God. And these people, whoever they are, whether you know them or not, whether you see them online or on the news or not, it's the same old, same old. There's only two roads. You can face towards God or you can turn your back on him. That's it. You can face the day, the beautiful day, look at the blessings of the Lord and walk according to his righteousness or you could turn your back on him but still kind of like pop in and go can I get some of that good sunshine can I get some of that good food and good da 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 you know one day that's they're going to be cut off from these things they spend their rest the most of their life denying God and then one day they're going to just take their last breath I guarantee you Yesterday was someone's last breath. I w they say every three seconds or something, or not even that, like a hypersecond, or someone dies. Some argument of a person. But look how many people are being born. I'm like, yeah, but all those people will die. I will die. You will die. We're all going to die. And it's sad, they spend their whole life rejecting God here. And one day they're going to stand before him and they're going to beg him to accept them in heaven. And God's like, you didn't accept me down here. Why should I accept you now? You lived your whole life with your back turned to me. And now you want me to let you in? Get out of here. You wouldn't even do that. Can you imagine? <laughs> if somebody treated you like that, if somebody turned their back to you every day, every time God tried to get your attention through someone or something, you turned your back to him and you're like, I don't want to hear this. Can you imagine if, if, if you were doing, if someone did that to you, they kept turning their back from you, right? And then one day they come knocking on your door. We're like, can you let me in? You're like, I don't know you. Depart from me, right? Can we really blame God when he throws people in hell, when they deny him their whole life? You would do the same thing. There's people who knock on my door. <laughs> <laughs> there are people who knock on everybody's door, right? 
asking for stuff. And you say, who are you? <laughs> right? And But you don't like when people say that to you. Who are you? And so it's funny because the Bible says the measure they use will be measured to them. They spend their whole life denying God as Pharaoh and saying, who are you? Who is this God? I don't know. I don't recognize this God. Is he one of my gods? You know, that's what Pharaoh was saying. You know, the fertility God, the sun God, right? The moon God, they had all kinds of gods in Egypt, right? But we have all kinds of gods down here. My phone God, my yard God, my dog God, my bank account God, right? We got all kinds of gods down here. And then when someone comes to us with the word of God in the, in the Lord and the spirit, we say, who is this God? I got all my gods here, my car God, my house God, my bank account God. Who is this Jesus God? And one day we're going to knock on his door and say to him, can you let me in? You spent your whole life denying me down here. Who are you? I don't know you because that's what we say to him. We say to him while we're down here, breathing his air, eating his food, doing what we want in his land. <laughs> and he and he just lets us because he sees the, the end of our days. That's why he lets us do it. He's like, go for it. You only got 10 years left. <laughs> go for it. You can have this is the your best life down here. This is going to be your best life down here. 10 years left, buddy. You got 10 years left. <laughs> you can eat my food. You can do all that. Watch. You got 10 years left to repent. I give you 10 years to repent. You don't want to repent? Everything you're enjoying right now, everything that you like right now, you like my son, you like this, you like that, you like that, you like that's mine. That's mine. I own that. I own that. I own that. I own that. That's mine. That's mine. Everything good in your life belongs to me, God says. You got 10 years, buddy. 10 years. But don't be knocking on my door once you take your last breath and ask me, let me in. When you didn't let me in while you were here on earth and I gave you so much time. But we're all going to run out of time. I was having really good lunch yesterday. Um, at a little restaurant with my wife and Elko. My kids. And I thought, man, this burrito is so amazing. And I just really enjoyed it. And I just gave praise to the Lord. I go, man. Thank you for, for, for the people that serve this and thank you for the food and the, the, the farmers. And, but it's your land. It's your food. It's all yours, God. Thank you for it, man. And I thought about people who are in hell. They're probably going to be hungry, but they're not ever going to have anything like that again. That's sad. <sighs> We got to get right with Jesus every day, folks, because we don't know. As Paul says, we, we preach this message urgently every day because we don't know when our last day is. I've seen so many videos. I've seen, I've known so many people. They live like they've got all the time in the world, like they're never going to die. Like they got, oh, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and, and boom, out of nowhere. One of the videos I saw well, unfortunately, it was a shooting one, but it was a church. It was like probably like five years ago, somewhere in Texas. Some guy, some young guy, he looked pretty young. He shows up wearing a trench coat with a gun, and they had the cameras in the church. He sits in the back corner. Obviously, most of the people, if you ever go to church, they know you're new. <laughs> and they know if 
they, they just know, you know. <laughs> and so they're watching him. This the guy pulls a gun out, blasts the dude in front of him. The guys in the back, they're, they're concealed carry. They pull their guns out and take him out. The guy gets like, he, he kills the first dude. The second person got wounded before he died. And then I guarantee you, and I thought about like what it must have been like to be the dude who got, who died that day. I mean, he should be in one of the most safest places in the world, the church, right? He probably, what, what was he thinking? Was he, maybe he was listening to the sermon. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was just like contemplating of, you know, calling his insurance company or whatever. Maybe he's looking at the clock like, maybe I should get out of here. You know, I can't wait till service is over. Right? Maybe he was a hardcore Christian. Who knows what was running through his mind? He just goes to church one day, puts on his shoes, his clothes, his, his da 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 da. He's got his whole week planned out. You know, and uh, this is just a normal Sunday routine and and yada, yada, yada. Not to mention all the other people who have got other things going on in their life and their mind. They're not expecting any of this, you know. And so long story short, this guy just goes to church sermon. It it didn't seem like this church, this, this, this sermon even started for very long. And then. In the video, this guy just, pull, just stands up, simultaneously pulls in the gun out, and blasts that guy right in the back. He didn't even see it coming. The guy sitting down, trying to wa- listen to the sermon or whatever he was thinking about, contemplating about, maybe looking at the clock. Maybe he's like, oh, man, I can't wait to get some IHOP today, you know? Oh, I wonder what Barbara's doing, you know? I want to go see my kids after this. And he just, and he just, dead. He's sitting there looking at the pew. He hears some ruckus for a split second before he gets, before he fall, sees himself falling to the ground and can't breathe. A few seconds later, he's dead. I guarantee you, he did not think that was his last day on earth and that will happen to you and i if you're lucky enough to live old enough to know you're sitting there on a respirator ready to die there's going to be many of us that are going to be in freak accidents we're just buckling our kids or getting in the car headed to such and such place and you know before you know i'll get hit by a semi or fall asleep at the wheel. Who knows? God knows. God knows when our last day here on earth is. Let me ask you a question. If God told you, hey man, you got 10 years, what would you do different? God said, this is your, he pops open the sky. He shows himself to you and he says, hey buddy, (laughs) you got one month left. You better start fixing your stuff, getting your stuff in order before I call you up here and judge you for where you're going to spend eternity. Man, let me tell you something, folks. That could be any day. For me, for you, for anyone. Amen? So let's recap here before I end here. I don't want to go over. God made the day, God made the evening, and I believe he made it knowing there would be sin and free will. And everything has his fingerprint on it, whether we acknowledge him or not. The Bible says, today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it. Man, maybe... That guy was sitting in church and he was just thinking about the Lord like, oh, man, I can't wait to be with you. 
oh man, you know, I just can't. Boom, falls to the ground. A few seconds later, can't breathe. He's out of his bodies. The angels take him to heaven. And the Lord says, welcome home. <laughs> welcome home. I hope in my life that one day, the day that I die, whatever it looks like, whatever it is, whether I'm driving or whether I'm sitting in the church and someone decides to blast me in the back, whether I'm doing this, that, and the other, I'd be able to look at my life, look back on it, wherever I'm at, whatever I'm doing, and literally have no regrets. Just, just smile and go, Lord, thank you. Thank you for all the goodness that you have given me through my life. And then someone shoots me in the back where <laughs> I just close my eyes and then I wake up to heaven. Amen. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you guys for listening. Until next time, this is our sermons, Genesis. Let's pray. Father, bless this word as you already have. Forgive us of our sins as you already have. Wash us in your blood. And I pray for those to be forgiven under your righteous grace. In Jesus' name, amen. And God bless.